Hi there, Christoph. How are you? Hello, everyone. It's Christoph here from Intech Studio. Hi, Matt. Brilliant. Yes, Intech Studio. I've uh, I've been watching you guys from afar. Um, you do all these wonderful controllers, which can yes, be used indeed. for all sorts of different things: uh, audio software, graphic software, video software. So, um, yeah, I'd love to know more about these. Tell tell us about them. Yeah, uh, we started off as an audio company, working mainly with uh, MIDI. All of the controllers support the full MIDI 1.0 spectrum. It ev these even support 14-bit high-resolution MIDI or CSX for controlling uh, other synth gear. The modules themselves then can be configured and they remember their own configurations. There are like four pages of configurations which can be changed by these utility side buttons on the sides. But this can be reassigned onto the control surface to have like all of the buttons change pages. In this case, we have a Tractor Pro configuration with stem mixing for the four channels, a play, queuing, same for the other deck. Although these two buttons are now configured for a showcase, uh, somebody asked how to do the page changes with the buttons instead of the utility button on the side. So that's just one way to really reassign anything uh -huh. on the surface. So you can assign anything on here to anything that can be assigned to in the computer. And there are pages as well for each one. So it's not just four buttons, four faders, and four knobs here. There's actually multiple of them. Yeah, these are like uh, programmable devices. We don't uh, hide the fact that you can go very deep into it. So you essentially have here small modular uh, con uh, computers. And uh, the computers can be configured, in this case, with Lua scripting language. In the background here, we have the editor software for each of the control elements. Oh. I can see what of the uh, control elements are and what their configurations uh, are here. On the right panel, I can see there are some local variables which are reading in the values from the device during runtime. And those values are then sent into the MIDI action block, which is like your uh, nice four-parameter MIDI action block with the typical channel command, a parameter one and parameter two settings for control values when you are sending out the command 176 or note on note of messages with 144 and yeah, as the okay. MIDI specification and goes. Can you scale that? So let's say you didn't want you wanted this fader to go to the top and you don't want it to be 127 on MIDI. Yeah. Can you scale that so it actually just goes up to 20? Yeah, actually, uh, this is often you uh, done in most digital audio workstations, yeah, like in true. Ableton or some software yeah. like that. But I can come here to the setup part, then I can type in, I think this is a fader, so I have here the slight pot meter okay. action block, yeah. enable it, and I will change it to, I don't know what, 100, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. And yeah, I click out of it. Bang. Uh, on the left panel, I have a built-in small MIDI monitor, and I think now it should go only up to 100. So that's okay. where we max out this slider. Fantastic. Yeah, that's really useful to do, actually. I know you can do that in DAWs. Yes. But to be able to do it here, can you know, you can kind of take care of it here and let the DAW just deal with the music. Yeah, <laughs> or if you want to go to control hardware. For example, in this case, we have here a Eurorack-mounted uh, setup. Both of these modules are like the very same units we have on the flat surface. We just have this 3D printed bracket for them. The source of the brackets are available for free on our GitHub page, oh. uh, but uh, you can uh, buy it from us as well printed. It has this nice breakout uh, button clicking thing, so you can make the page changes easier on the modules. And then there is also a USB-C breakout cable in the back, which you can use to route it out. Yeah, here is a blank panel. So that's how it's been powered? Yeah. I see. And um, yeah, this one looks quite interesting. We've got a screen on this one. Yes, indeed. So it's just an uh, Interstudio uh, demo one. But oh, let I me see. Reset it. That's okay. 
So would that usually typically display values? And yes, indeed. In this case, we have the four encoders and their uh, control values uh, shown here. Okay. But it can also change, this module at least can uh, change in this setup, the presets for this module. So if I go over one of the buttons, then the encoder LED intensity is also changing a tiny bit. Yeah. And that's uh, how you can quickly make uh, a preset change for this module. We look at this module as an extension to our one knob per function control surface idea, where you have all the tactile control elements at your fingertips. And then you have a screen which can add additional uh, visual feedback, visual clues, uh, what's going on behind the scenes. Cool. It's a very work in progress thing, at least software wise. Uh, we are now working on different uh, UI widgets and uh, visualization options mm -hmm. uh, to give people uh, some templates for the most common use cases when it comes to parameter showcases. Yeah. Great. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this might be good for DAW scrolling. Then it might be good when I'm working in DaVinci, editing videos on the timeline. So, yeah, multiple uses. Yes. It, it might be worth us just jumping over because I saw something interesting with one of the buttons. Yeah. I thought I saw earlier there was this, as you was pressing this button. Yeah, let me see. We I, I will press and then you can focus on the camera. <laughs> yeah. So we can see that moving there as we're depressing. Yes, the let button. me find some of the more visible things. I'm not sure what is mapped to what in this case. But yeah, yeah, I have here the frequencies so and two frequencies. And based on the pressure applied to these mechanical key switches, we can see the changes within Ableton. Uh, these are whole effect switches. This is rather uh, a rather new thing. Uh, many keyboard manufacturers who use the gaming keyboard, uh, keyboards and, and make them, uh, they started to use it. But uh, we thought that it's a very cool uh, product variant and uh, we should change our, our previous tactile switches to these kind of key switches. Yeah. Uh, all of the modules have these uh, um, Gacheron style MX switches, or I might be mistaken a bit here, but the thing is that you can hot swap them. So I don't have the prying tool with me, but if right. you want a silent key switch, yeah. because you are working in a recording environment, in a theater, something like that, then um, you can change these buttons if it's too loud for you and have a more silent button for your needs. That's great. And I have to say, you guys have got the best swag yeah. with this button the key fidget ring button. <laughs> Little fidget button. Look at that, that's great. I'm gonna take one of those. <laughs> so are all of these available to purchase now? Um, yes, and yeah, define purchase. It's <laughs> uh, available to purchase, but it's in pre-order state for the Series 3 modules. Series 3 is a new change for the wall grid lineup. Uh, we have renewed most of the internals when it comes to the user interface elements, what you're interacting with. Now the potentiometer module comes with metal shaft potentiometers, uh, so that's uh, something uh, better than before. Okay. Uh, the buttons are changed from the previous tactile ones, which yep. we don't even have on the table right now, to these mechanical key switches. Um, and also for the endless encoders, we have now smooth variants. Mm -hmm. And previously, we only had detent variants. So whenever you uh, turned a knob, it had always the little, little clicks, clicks. Uh, yeah. around. But now we will yeah. have smooth options, not only for the EF44, but also for the EN16 uh, module. So it's a, a bit of a renewal, a yeah. bit of a refresh for the wall lineup. And are they all different? Prices or are they around the same kind of um, price? They are in the bracket of 150 and 250 euros okay. uh, as of today. So that's the price range for the modules. Fantastic. Um, I, and I just need to ask I mean, are these, uh, can you color code them? Color, I mean, can you change the colors yourself and buy the different colors and things like that if you yeah, want to? Yeah, for the keycaps. Yeah. Um, these keycaps are like standard ones. Yeah. Uh, so what the, the difference is basically just uh, how the, the top part is. All If a keycap has this kind of cherry uh, insert, this uh, X, yeah. then you can uh, essentially put it on to one of these keycaps. 
So yeah, we plan to carry stock from some colors, uh, like black and uh, white, but possibly like red, green, uh, blue, those, those typical colors. But we also plan to do some custom runs with custom icons, uh, which is yeah. often uh, used in creative software. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much. Intech Studios. Um, I guess go to your website, you can look at the full range there. Thank yes. you so much for taking us through this. Really interesting, and uh, I love the kind of how it, how it is modular. You can create your own setups, you can use them for multiple purposes. Yes, indeed. And the interface looks, what you showed us, looks really easy to configure as well, so. Well, it has depths, so if you only want to go for LED settings or you want to uh, change your preferred MIDI setup, then that's an easy thing to do. But uh, if, you're going, if you want to do shift layers, sequencers, or even some uh, mouse movement or gamepad configurations all within the editor, that's also possible, but that part requires a bit of coding. Yeah. But for that, we do have a Discord community and a forum and a friendly uh, support peers who uh, come to uh, answer your emails. Cool, man. Well, again, thank you so much. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.